doubt about it, most Tokyo people do not want the new security treaty between Japan and America. Outside Parliament, they demonstrated against it, hoping to stop the government ratifying the treaty. It gives the U.S. bases ten more years to stay in Japan. In the early 1960s, the Japanese government was in the process of renewing the post-World War II treaty that permitted the United States to maintain a military presence in Japan. It was a time of immense social upheaval. The youth of Japan especially gave impassioned and aggressive attempts to prevent the renewal. These were the Ampo protests, and at their climax, hundreds of thousands of people would gather outside of Tokyo's National Diet Building every day to protest. Despite this, the speaker was dragged, literally dragged, into his seat and the accord was passed. The protests failed. And as all this was going on... Just across the country, the film production and distribution company Shochiku was getting into hot water. Criticized for being too old-fashioned, their films were being outpaced by the rival studio Nikatsu and its more popular youth-oriented movies. The studio needed something new, so they turned to some young ADs, unknown directors, and handed over full creative control. The idea was to manufacture a movement, a new wave of film. They took inspiration from the French Nouveau Vague that was gaining prevalence just across the water, and the Nouburu Bagu was formed, literally the Japanese pronunciation of Nouveau Vague. In a last-ditch attempt to revive interest, they gave control to the youth and said, make something. And what followed was completely unexpected. ね、どう見てもね、本当の女の子しか見えないけれどね。あの、いつ頃からこのこの世界へこの足を突っ込んだんですか。え、あの、4年ほど前ですね。あの、どういう動機でね、英語になった。やっぱり自分がこういうね、
What started as a studio-endorsed project, the Nubaru Bagu quickly spiraled past the confines of a single studio. It became an umbrella term for the themes and mood of Japanese films at the time. New wave Japanese films were subversive, explicit, challenging. They took everything that had come before and threw it away with a decisive severity. Hiroshi Teshigahara, Nagisa Oshima, Shoshi Imamura, Seijun Suzuki, these new directors explored ideas and concepts previously untouched by the more traditional Japanese cinema. Uninhibited sexuality, social outcasts as protagonists, the changing roles of women in Japanese society, primal instincts of human nature versus civilized behavior, the internal struggle of identity, racism, and the position of ethnic minorities in Japan. All told, they were total deconstructions and critiques of the established social structures and assumptions. The films of the Japanese New Wave had no concrete genre or theme. Teshigahara is the face of another, about a scarred man receiving a new face that alters his personality. Suzuki's comically bizarre Yakuza thriller, Branded to Kill. Death by Hanging, a dark satire about a man who survives his planned execution but gets amnesia, and the panic of the guards in charge as they struggle with the moral implications of retrying the hanging. Each one was unique, and so each had its own perspective and commentary on the world. It is impossible to separate the Japanese New Wave from the political and social turmoil of the time. They are inextricable. You have to understand one to stand any chance of understanding the other, because they were all saying things about the society they came from. And that's hard. As a contemporary teen myself, living in the year of our Lord 2022, it's hard to speak on exactly what the people of a time before me were feeling in a country I have no prior knowledge of. But here's the thing. In a way, I do know. Because of this. The best way to take the temperature of any point in history is the art that people were creating at the time. Beyond history books, beyond Wikipedia articles, beyond the biased reporting of a British news channel, the incredible thing about art is that it gives us the ability to connect with people whose perspectives are otherwise completely inaccessible to us. It is the most intimate of acts to create and share. We do it for others, but we also do it for ourselves. The Japanese New Wave wasn't a copy of the French Nouveau Vague, or the British New Wave, or anything else. All around the world, populations were still recovering from the Second World War. In every corner where films were being produced, there was a sudden outcry of out with the old, in with the new, as people wanted films that represented the issues and struggles they experienced in their daily lives. You can see this in the Japanese New Wave. These films are grittier, messier, more difficult to parse, because that's real life. In a condemnation of the insincere depictions of life that they were tired of seeing, Filmmakers were attempting to communicate what their lived reality was like. It was a collective questioning of the traditional rules of society that they were beginning to recognize as flawed. Get rid of formality, antiquity, tradition. What can we do if we throw away the rule book? Let's make something different. Let's make something that looks like us. Let's make something strange. Whatever we make, can we make something real? Because in the end, the Japanese New Wave wasn't a polite, palatable translation of how the people of Japan were feeling. It wasn't a diluted, polished, or quiet sound. Like all great art, really, it was a scream.